Good evening. Today's topic is banking and finance, and I have to admit that this is not my strongest suit. So bear with me as I hobble through this presentation on the European Banking Authority, which gets shortened to the acronym EBA. Many years ago, when I was living in London, I used to live in East London, near an area called Canary Wharf. You may have heard of Canary Wharf. Now, Canary Wharf, since the 1980s, has seen huge changes. It's gone from being uh, an East End Docklands to one of Europe's main financial hubs. It looks a bit like Manhattan with skyscrapers and uh, lots of banks and offices there. Now, before Brexit, we used to have the European Banking Authority headquartered in Canary Wharf. But as a consequence of Brexit, that has now been relocated. Cities in the running for uh, being the new home for the EBA uh, were Frankfurt and Dublin, but it ended up going to Paris, to an area of Paris called La Défense. As an aside, the European uh, Medicines Agency, which was also based at Canary Wharf, has now been relocated to Amsterdam. Anyway, back to the EBA. This essentially is um, a watchdog. It aims to regulate uh, the banking industry within the European Union. It works... Uh, in a framework called the European System of Financial Supervision. It's the ESFS. And it works alongside two other bodies, the ESMA, the European Securities and Markets Authorities, and the EIOPA, the European Insurance and Occupational Pensions Authority. Uh, now, it aims to provide effective, consistent and prudential regulation and supervision across the European banking sector. Uh, it holds up as its main aims as operating with integrity, efficiency and ensuring the orderly function of the banking sector. One of, uh, one of its overall aims is to provide financial stability in the European Union and the internal market. Some of its other goals are also to look at um, countering anti-money laundering and uh, countering the financing of terrorism, but that's not its main aim. Uh, going back to its main aim, how does it operate well it produces um, regulatory and non-regulatory documents um, some of the main things that it works on is the binding technical standards these are the bts's these are legal acts they're directives or regulations and as such they have to be endorsed and adopted by the european commission and then applied to all member states. Alongside these binding technical standards, the European Banking Authority also produces guidelines, recommendations, opinions, regular reports and ad hoc reports. It works on a European single rule book with the aim of harmonising the banking system and uh, aiming towards convergence of supervisory practices uh, as well as assessing risks and vulnerabilities. Now as such it's a European Union agency that was set up by the European Parliament and by the European Council. Uh, agencies work in specific legal, technical or scientific areas. They have to work with evidence to produce evidence-based policies that can operate on both a national level and a European Union level. Now, I know this is a bit technical, but bear with me. Uh, some of the five main areas in which it works are 
one, it can investigate incorrect or insufficient application of EU law by national authorities. Number two, it can help make decisions for authorities and institutions in emergency situations. Number three, it can help resolve disagreements when there are cross-border situations. Uh, number four, it can provide advice to all three of the uh, main European Union bodies, the European Parliament, the European Commission, the European Council. And uh, the fifth one, that it tries to increase transparency, simplicity and fairness for a consumer market uh, of products and services within the internal market. hope that makes sense. Now I tried to find an example of this work to try and elucidate what it does and it's, it's not easy to find a kind of clear example but from what I can understand in response to the recent pandemic the European Banking Authority has come up with stress tests to see how economies and financial institutions can cope with uh, the impact of the pandemic, the Covid pandemic. And according to an article in the Financial Times, the FT, the European Banking Authority is hopeful that buffers in place should be sufficient to uh, deal with the hit that the pandemic has caused. And this hit uh, is to the tune of 380 billion euros. Uh, but the advice that the European Banking Authority is giving is that it is hopeful that uh, the banking system can absorb that shock. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up now. Uh, yeah, one of my more technical and drier speeches. I hope you managed to follow it. Uh, most of the information was taken from their website and uh, well if you've uh, understood all of those pieces of information that I've uh, put forward there uh, you've done very well indeed. Thank you very much for listening.